what's your thought on, on Black Lives Matter? What is it? What, what do you mean? The idea is that there's this movement called Black Lives Matter thinking that the rest of America didn't seem to understand that, that Black Lives Matter. It just sounds weird. I don't know that you put a name on it. It's not a name. It's not whatever, whatever. It's somebody got shot by police and for a <laughs> reason. Do you separate yourself from it? I don't feel connected to a damn thing. That ain't got nothing to do with me. If you do, you crazy. You. In an unexpected move, the leader of Black Lives Matter St. Paul is leaving the activist organization. I'm not going to put the blame solely on Black Lives Matter, but I will say that they're being duped right now. Rashad Turner, who led Black Lives Matter St. Paul for nearly two years, says he is leaving his position after the National Black Lives Matter organization joined forces with the NAACP to call for a moratorium on charter schools. Turner, who has been an educator for more than seven years, says he cannot stand by their decision. It was sort of bittersweet to leave that, but I'm a person of integrity, and that call for a moratorium on charter schools I think is just wrong and misleading to a lot of people. The NAACP and the Movement for Black Lives claim charter schools exacerbate segregation. In a statement, the Movement for Black Lives says school privatization strips black people of the rights to self-determine the kind of education their children receive. Turner says public schools not only have a bad record of staff assaulting black students, but offer less options for black families. I think that this moratorium really takes away the student voice, takes away the parent voice. Maybe I'm being too soft. But anybody who can talk, you know, America's woke corporate structure into sending close to $100 million on the basis of that lame rap kind of gets my respect in a way. She has my respect because she's unapologetic in her approach. She's telling you what she is. She's a Marxist. So Marxists steal money from other people and they enrich themselves <laughs> right. until the people that they stole from are poor. And so she has stolen money from other people on the pretext of a lie that is Black Lives Matter. And she's enriched herself yep. and she's brought four homes. I mean, you have to kind of appreciate the honesty. She's not hiding by any means, you know. And so, yeah, I, I tend to agree with you here. She's a communist through and through, and she's been unbelievably unapologetic in her approach. Co-founder of Black Lives Matter, Patrice Cullors, says she's stepping down. This comes following what she calls a smear campaign from a right-wing group and other black organizers. Cullors has been at the head of the BLM Global Network Foundation for nearly six years years and will no longer be the executive director of the movement's foundation. She says she's leaving to focus on other projects, including the upcoming release of her second book and a multi-year TV development deal with Warner Brothers. Recently, she was accused of using money from the foundation to purchase a Southern California home. Yes, Patrice Colas, uh, she has uh, not only been at the helm of Black Lives Matter for more than six years, but she was one of the three co-founders and she's going to be leaving to focus on her book and TV deals. Uh, this is a woman who identifies as a trained Marxist Rowan. And as we know, BLM, if you actually look at their charter and what they push, they're unashamedly Marxist, anti-capitalist. But we've also found out that she has accumulated quite an impressive multi-million dollar property portfolio. And, uh, and BLM continues to enjoy support from all those uh, dim-witted corporates who back a company that is anti-capitalist. It's, it's bizarre. But but here we are. Okay, let me uh, tell you about Rashad Turner. He is from Minneapolis. Uh, his father was shot and killed when he was two years old. He was raised by his grandparents. He went to college first in his family. Here's a picture of him. He earned his master's. He said education was a pathway to success. And then in 2015, he started a local chapter of Black Lives Matter. He said because he does believe Black Lives Matter. But he said after a year on the inside, he saw little concern for the desire to rebuild black families. Listen to him. He was on Fox and Friends first earlier with Jillian and Todd. How can black lives matter if black minds don't matter? If we had 90 million, heck, children would be up here reading, our schools would be better. But let me add something here. When, when you think about that 90 million, where it comes from, BLM has been co-opted. They've been co-opted by teachers unions. So these teachers unions own the Democrats, they own BLM, and teachers unions, in my opinion, they kill our children's hopes and dreams. So if black lives really matter, we must start in that classroom. Minnesota is 94% white, yet they walk around acting like they're so woke that they understand what's best for black children, right? But they own our education system. 
you're doing something that many people haven't done, black women at the forefront. Um, that is hard to comprehend, that's hard to understand, uh, but I promise you that what I have done, with other, what other BLM leaders have done in the organization, um, and what we're trying to do is get black people free. Color's last day with the BLM Foundation will be tomorrow. To watch all of my exclusive content not featured here on my channel, log on to my website at I'm just here to make you think.com slash fumes. today's society of America, the racial divide has been a major issue to resolve when everyone has been indoctrinated with believing that different races of people actually exist, instead of knowing that simply all living people are humans or electrical beings. And even though many people have spotted this common issue before, no one seems to bother with questioning who created the term race exactly along with its one-directional motives and long-term manipulative agendas. Particular groups of people are not cognizant of the self-inflicting wounds they cast upon themselves when allowing strangers to undermine their true identities by inadvertently accepting a stranger's set of beliefs that are disguised as political correctness. What do you think, Morgan? Is this political yeah. correctness gone too far? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a tendency to do that anyway. I mean, you get politically correct um, stuff happens that you don't want to happen. I all of a sudden became an African. <laughs> correctness. African American. I'm not African. 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 Black History Month, you find. Ridiculous. Why? You're going to relegate my history to a month? Oh, come well, on. What do you do with yours? What, which month is White History Month? <laughs> well, 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 come on. Tell me. Well, the, uh, I'm Jewish. Okay. Which I'm month sure. is Jewish History Month? Uh, there isn't one. Oh. Oh. Why not? Yeah. Well, you want one? No, no. No, I, 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 I don't either. I don't want a Black History Month. Black history is American history. How are we going to get rid of racism and stop talking about it? I'm going to stop calling you a white man. Yep. And I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. A black man. A black man. A black man. Political correctness stands as an idea or concept that forces public opinion to be prejudicially generalized, which mentally alters natural human perceptions and beliefs, dangerously influencing the beginning, the climax, and the conclusions of the public's everyday life. Obviously, this type of discussion is needed and long overdue, and it also gets a lot deeper when you critically think about it for a while especially when you're the type that's surfing for solutions to the problems that you see surrounding you versus focusing on what's taking place right in front of you. For example, each generation arises a new set of movements, wars, riots, and even the creation of bills or laws, just to name a few things. And it wouldn't be hard to find that there are particular people that have been chosen or hired to be utilized as symbols or public figures whose duty is to influence public acceptance of well-decorated misinformation by way of fear-mongering distractions that are filled with tons of contradictions. 
These contradictions can be easily spotted by the utilitarian methods of critical thinking, researching, and by simply questioning everything well beyond the commonly known morals of a story told to you. The internet was given to us here in America during the 1980s. But really think about that now. Because since the internet came into existence during the 1980s, then the same thing applies to its information also, right? During my earliest videos back in the year 2016, I warned everyone about the nonprofit organization called Black Lives Matter. This was at a time where people did not pay any attention to its founders, co-founders, financial aids, and even its overall agendas and guiding principles. On the original Black Lives Matter website, before it was just recently changed, I pointed out how you were able to click on a tab labeled Guiding Principles which would then take you to another page filled with square-shaped black and yellow colored sub-tabs, in which one of these tabs labeled black families stood out to me the most. By clicking on this tab, it gave a statement saying, quote, we are committed to making our spaces family friendly and enable parents to fully participate with their children. We are committed to dismantling the patriarchal practice that requires mothers to work double shifts that require them to mother in private, even as they participate in justice work." End quote. Did you notice that there was no mention of a father, nor of a heterosexual male for that matter? And that's even throughout this entire original Black Lives Matter website. And did you also notice the avatar associated with this tab? Two children figures and one adult figure equals the so-called black family? Are they promoting empowerment or complete separation here? And then it gets a lot deeper. I'm not no Black Lives Matter supporter. Like, You're not? Uh, no, absolutely. Why not? Because it's not our movement. This is a movement that was given to us by, you know, George Soros and his fucking boys because they saw how things were going and they didn't want it to go back to the 60s to where we start having our own organic movements. That was a big fucking problem for them. So let's give the people a movement that we can control will provide them the leaders and all of this type of shit. That's what Black Lives Matter is. Look at the leaders of Black Lives Matter. Are there leaders of oh, Black yeah. Lives Matter? Yeah. Who? Look at these lesbian women who are trying to incorporate those, their concerns into black people's concerns. Go to the website, look it up. Google well, George Soros and Black Lives Matter, see what comes up. Let's look it up. Okay. Um, and not, and you know, y'all out there, George Soros is a fucking multi-billionaire down with, you know, some of the 12 he raised, richest people in the fucking He raised a hundred million dollars. Yep. The Black Lives Matter Coalition, the funding come in addition, comes in addition to more than 33 million grants from top Democratic Party donor, George Soros. That's about, let us give you a movement that we can control, use certain, symbolism from <clears throat> the original civil rights movement like the black you know red black and green all these different symbols we're going to incorporate that but only it's going to be a movement that we control we decide what the messages are we decide what the slogans are you know what happened to no justice no peace and you know no peace no justice now it's uh hands up don't shoot fucking i can't breathe and all these negative affirmations and he's absolutely correct the universe ancestors spirits or god whatever which one you want to use listens to what you say out your mouth and how you feel inside you are the dictator in that sense, not the creator, the dictator. So if you let your words and your actions meet, 
then it becomes your reality. And that can either be good or bad based upon how you decide what the outcome would be from the very beginning. Before we were introduced to the three so-called co-founders of the Black Lives Matter organization, we saw a guy named DeRay McKesson being constantly labeled as the leader of the Black Lives Matter movement. In June of 2016, DeRay's cell phone was hacked by the cyber activist group known as Anonymous, and they publicly posted all of DeRay's private Twitter conversations with Jonetta Elzey, another protest organizer, about their plans to literally disrupt then-presidential candidate Donald Trump's campaign rallies to cause a stir that will bring about martial law, causing Barack Obama to stay in office as president for a third term. In a private direct message, Jonetta asked DeRay, quote, have you spoken with Miss Lynch recently about the plan for the summer and fall leading up to the elections? And DeRay responded by saying, quote, we spoke two weeks and they want us to start really pushing how racist Trump is now instead of waiting so the others can start getting the protesters ready to shut both conventions down. And then he goes on to say, we have to make sure that we use our voices to keep people disrupting Trump all summer and through the fall so Marshall can be declared." End quote. The lady that they were referring to as their contact was the U.S. Attorney General at that time, Loretta Lynch of the Democratic Party. But I have my phone hacked, so I'm on a panel and I have two phones. Uh, and one phone is like, please activate your phone. And I'm like, I've never seen that before. Like, please activate it. So I turn it off, turn it back on. And what it came out to is that if you have Verizon, uh, the last four digits of your social is your PIN for your Verizon account. So somebody hacked, got my social. They called, they changed my SIM card over the phone, which I didn't know what you could wow. do. And then they reset all my passwords so that the, the like code to go back into your account goes to a device they can control. And then it takes me like all day to get back in my phone. You know, it's just like, a, it's a nightmare. Isn't it quite odd? Out of all of the public interviews that DeRay McKesson and Loretta Lynch have participated in, between the time of his phone being hacked and beyond, that not one time was either of them asked about these leaked messages? And speaking of the Democratic Party, did you know that the KKK was a political creation of the Democrats? Oh, and here's another thing I wanted to point out. According to the History Channel, quote, the KKK engaged in terrorist raids against African Americans and white Republicans at night, employing intimidation, destruction of property, assault, and murder to achieve its aims and influence upcoming elections. End quote. Now, doesn't that sound all too familiar? Fast forward to today, when you log on to the newly updated Black Lives Matter website, there is a tab that's highlighted blue and labeled Donate. And if you were to click on this tab, it brings up a totally separate website called Act Blue, which is a nonprofit 501c3 funding pool created only by the Democrats, in which this website says that it's only for, quote, Democratic candidates up and down the ballot, progressive organizations, and nonprofits. End quote. As of today, DeRay McKesson is no longer affiliating himself with the Black Lives Matter organization. In this 2018 interview, listen closely to what he details without name dropping as he responds to a popular question concerning the mystery of how he is supported financially. This issue about money, you know, it comes up often and people think I'm sponsored by Patagonia. I'm not, I'm a customer. The blue Patagonia vest is definitely controversial. We'll get to that later on the program. Um, people think I'm sponsored by McDonald's, by Spotify. I don't take money to tweet and you know, the reality is that the group of people that I'm closest to, we've raised $140,000 in four years. 
which is not a lot of money, especially in the nonprofit community. Now, in, in the book, I actually talk about like we should we should, I name a lot of people that like you don't know, but if not for them, there would be no movement because if not for Ferguson and St. Louis, like that created the space. So I'm, so I'm sensitive to that and I don't want to invalidate those claims. Uh, it is hard to be the brunt of people's frustration. Like I didn't do it, right? So like there are people who have raised millions in the protests. Like we just chose not, we chose not to participate in the non like that sort of race around money because we wanted to see, could we make an impact without raising a lot of money? And even Black Lives Matter affiliate, Sean King, and his nonprofit organization called Grassroots Law Project with civil rights lawyer Lee Merritt is also under the guise of the Democratic fundraiser Act Blue. Whenever someone wants to donate to their non-transparent cause, which should make you ask some questions like millions upon millions of dollars have been donated by the public to these orgs all due to their relatable general plans and public pledges or promises. But where exactly does all of this donated money go after it's accepted by Act Blue on behalf of these organizations? Why are these organizations not so transparent when it comes to the usage of the funds provided to them? Just a day or so after the video of George Floyd's murder went viral everywhere, you then began to see the hashtag Black Lives Matter trending on every social media site, from your favorite celebrities to Democratic politicians to government officials to even famously known large corporations were all using the hashtag. Was this all done in order to bring attention towards the issue of police brutality and the unfair treatment of the indigenous Nijis of Turtle Island? Or was this all done to bring attention to these large corporations, politicians, government officials, and your favorite celebrities? A distraction is defined as a diversion that prevents someone from giving their full attention to something. But another essential definition of the word distraction is an extreme agitation of the mind or emotions, a mental distress. This is why the American public is easily manipulated and influenced by the compelling events that they see on television and all throughout popular social media sites, emotionally dividing the mindsets of the public under a false sense of racial equality. We all saw what happened last week. We can't let that happen. Hopefully, George is looking down right now and saying, there's a great thing that's happening for our country. There's a great day for him. It's a great day for everybody. This is a great day for everybody. This is a great, great day in terms of equality. I will challenge Trump and ask him to show me where exactly equality exists in today's society of America. And it's not just Trump or the Republicans that will play the let's just brush things off and get along fine and act as if nothing happened type of people, the Democrats have historically acted in this manner as well. Like Joe Biden. And by the way, you know, I sit on the stand and it get hot. I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. And I tell you what. Joe Biden, who was vice president to Barack Obama, don't forget, blatantly telling our people that they are not black if they vote for Trump over him. You I can't do that to white media and black media because my wife has to go on at six o'clock. Okay. 
Oh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Listen, you got to come see us when you come to New York, VP Biden. Cause I a, will. It's a long way until November. We got more questions. You got more okay. questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. But wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. So anybody can determine if someone is black or not? Can we say that a person isn't white if they voted for Barack Obama? This exposes that the term black has a totally different meaning than what most may be aware of. For starters, the term black was historically used in conjunction with words that carry a negative connotation, like the term blacklisted, for example, which means blackballed and blackballed meaning blackmailed. And it works the same way as an officer on his radio sounding off the description of a black male being a suspect in question or someone they are instructed to lawfully murder according to what we see nowadays. The term black was famously used by prejudiced people as a derogatory labeling or a racial slur. So how did our people become defenseless and then later refer to each other as this same label? Should you call yourself black when you can look at your arms right now and see that your skin complexion is actually different shades of the color brown? And before you share your excuse as to the reason why you call yourself black, Focus on where that term arised from. Our people have never referred to each other as black in a historical sense. And why is that so important? Because of the spells of the English language. Meaning that the words you speak will directly impact or determine your reality by way of affirmation. And that will work both ways for an individual meaning that they can speak good or bad things into their existence. Very similar to how karma works. So by speaking the spells of the English language, you must be very careful not to inadvertently speak death or any forms of negativity over your life. For example, the etymology of the word black means colorless or the absence of color, which can be logically understood by you just simply cutting all of the lights out, then you would only see darkness, which affiliates the word black with direct synonyms like missing, lacking, unavailable, absent, and non-existent. Now, this is very important to note because this means that by you chanting Black Lives Matter, for example, you are inadvertently denouncing your existence subconsciously as if you're chanting no lives matter. Or when you say black people, you're not referring to the skin color of someone who is actually the color brown. You're inadvertently referencing non-existing people and it gets a lot deeper on the topic of racial inequality. Because if you are legally claiming or self-identifying as being black, then just ask yourself, what rights or privileges exist right now that were granted or agreed upon for any person or citizen that identifies as being black? Contrary to most popular beliefs and ideologies, the term black has no nationality whatsoever, nor does it really represent a group of people from a particular landmass or state or country. Because if that were the case, then we would all be immigrants from an island called Blackland that carried many tribes of people that called themselves blacks. And that's just not realistic, nor is it even truthful for that matter. So with all of that being said, 
we can easily determine where the root of the problem resides when it comes to racial inequality. And it starts with us truly identifying ourselves as who we really are and cease with allowing strangers to label us as if we're their chattel or property when we are actually their landlords. I'm just here to make you think.